You're listening to Beyond Wellness Radio, bringing you the cutting edge in health, biohacking, and sports performance. Stay up to date and listen anywhere and anytime on your computer, tablet, or smartphone by subscribing on iTunes. Catch your host, Dr. Justin Marcajani, as he answers your burning health questions as well as interviews from world-renowned guest experts. For more Beyond Wellness Radio, go to beyondwellnessradio.com. Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Welcome to Beyond Wellness Radio. Feel free and head over to beyondwellnessradio.com where you can access our full podcast transcriptions. While you're there, you can also sign up for our thyroid and female hormone video series. This series goes into the root cause of why your hormones are out of balance. While you're there, you can also schedule a functional medicine consult with Dr. Justin, myself, where we'll dig deeper into the root cause of your health challenges. Feel free and think of sharing this podcast with at least one person. This podcast grows by people sharing it. Sharing is caring. If you can think of one person that can benefit from this information, please feel free and share it. If you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. You can also click below the video or podcast where you'll see the iTunes review button and leave us a review. You can also sign up for the newsletter at beyondwellnessradio.com where you'll get updates before anyone else. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Hey there, it's Dr. J. Welcome back to Beyond Wellness Radio. Today we got a great guest, Elise Carr from Down Under, right? Over in Australia. (laughs) That is right, Dr. J. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. I love it. I love how with technology we're, we're so close here. This is great. It is, isn't it? We've got to be grateful for that. Very cool. And I'll just drop your site for anyone interested at uh, kind of checking your info out as your as the interview goes. www.stellamuse, S-T-L-L-A-M-U-S-E dot com. So really interesting stuff on there, really interesting information. And we're going to just kind of go over a couple of uh, the few key things that we talked about in our uh, pre-interview. So I'm really excited to dig in. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, absolutely. Stellamuse is a great website and plenty of free videos and and info for people to be having a look at, you know, after we have a chat as well. Very cool. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself, Elise. How did you get into the health field? I know you do a lot of coaching with with clients and patients, so to speak. What are some of the big issues that your patients that you see every day are, are dealing with? And how did you get into this field? Yeah, great questions. I was definitely brought up brought up in a very holistic way. So health and wellness and well-being and having a really strong connection to looking after yourself and the way you live your life has been a part of my life since I can remember. So that's probably a gift from from my upbringing right there. But it was also in understanding that I had a choice as well. And when I didn't make great choices, like, you know, not that I was ever, to be honest, ever went into the drugs, rock and roll kind of partying phase, didn't go there. But I had a really strong, I guess, view of that world because I came from the modeling industry. So Mm -hmm. I I saw what it could be like when you made choices for yourself that weren't really honoring your body temple, your life, anything to make you feel stronger, healthier, really actually connected to yourself and, and the earth and all of the above. So that was great in that sense. So when I say how I got into this, I came from a very different background. I actually originally studied journalism, public relations. I was working in those fields whilst modeling internationally and doing freelance journalism. It was really being a part of this world whilst wanting to live a very holistic lifestyle that I found these weren't marrying up. It wasn't really in sync and and I wasn't able to be the person that I really wanted to be and, and serve the way I wanted to serve. So I eventually through different life circumstances merged into going back and studying my master's in communications and cultural politics and women's studies. And that was the catalyst for me to then pull back from the whole journalism PR world and and then instead go into studying coaching and get my Reiki masters and go and study more esoteric work and healing healing work and from there go and expand and learn and become certified as a tantra practitioner and kind of gather this interesting eclectic bag of tools to then create Stella Muse and offer this as an entire holistic yes but also an empowering platform and, and space to be able to serve people in the way that I feel I'm here to serve. So it was kind of like a calling, like many of yeah. us receive in different ways. It's not that I ever expected I'd be doing this. I thought I'd probably be a, a psychologist or a lawyer, you know, but those shoes didn't fit. 
So yeah. I'm very fortunate to be where I am now, I feel, and, and having created Stella Muse and, and get to offer people a service that I feel can can enrich their lives and, yes, connect them to a, a space mm-hmm. of absolutely wellness and, and holistic lifestyle as much as it is empowering who they are and why they're here. So it's really interesting that you are a model first and then you kind of transition over to the health field. Looking back, how difficult was it, or, or maybe you didn't even have that awareness back when you were modeling, to yeah. practice a healthy lifestyle, meaning eating a, you know, a nutrient-rich, nutrient-dense diet, not yeah. having to work, worry about counting every calorie, and also not having to worry about getting excessive movement to burn those calories up. What was that like for you? What was the pressures like? Sure. Well, I guess I'm in my early 30s now, and I started modeling at the age of seven. And that wow. was by choice. I was never pushed into mm-hmm. it. I had a very supportive mom that said, what would you like to do? You know, like as, a, as an after school activity. And she listed many things. Karate was one of those or Taekwondo and, and modeling was in the mix. So I chose this. Right. I, I always chose this. And to be honest, I still am in the modeling world now. I just choose very different jobs to accept and, and weave it in with my work. So as I mentioned, holistic life, eating nourishing foods, knowing I need sleep, not choosing to take drugs, not choosing to drink alcohol, all those things were something that were already ingrained in me. So when I was going into my teens and early 20s and started working internationally, I already had a very strong ethos and, and a pretty strong belief in self. And this was tested time and time again, mind you. But what I found and what was one of my crossroads for me oh. is that it wasn't necessarily the wellness in the sense of exercise. I was very dedicated to exercise. I looked after my body temple in that regard. Mm -hmm. Food wise, I did the best with my capacity at the time. We can always improve. There's always room for, for trying different things. Really when I can like narrow in, I think what I was missing was good fats, to be honest, because the fat thing was like, oh, you can't have fat, you know, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, give me the organic olive oil, give me the avocados, give me the nuts. So there was a misconception. So there was probably a lack of awareness there. But other than that, for me, living in that world, what I was actually missing was probably vitamin L, which was love. Yeah. When you're living that lifestyle away from your family and friends and my beloved at the time, my, my partner, that was what was suffering. My soul was being undernourished. My Even my emotional intelligence and my intellect was hungry for something else. So that's why I say when we look at holistic health, it is the whole spectrum. And while I may have been eating to the best of my ability and looking after myself and, and not eating things that were going to be the detriment of my health and exercising very well and doing my best to sleep, you know, how 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 much you can when you're working crazy hours. And you know that, being a doctor yeah. for crazy hours too. Yeah. But it was those other elements, the vitamin L, as I mentioned, and, and those other connections that, that made me actually quite unwell. And I came back from one of my international stints with a cyst on my ovary that ruptured and my heart actually oh, flatlined wow. four times. So, wow. But interestingly enough, the cardiologist says you're disgustingly healthy because every time my heart started again on its own. It was just the toxins from that cyst that went through my body that caused me to kind of have mini kind of shutdowns while it could do its best to help itself. And when I look back and, and apparently my, my insides, all my beautiful organs are textbook perfect. So the irony was like, if I'm actually healthy, right. quote unquote, what was my body shutting down for? And I, I can't say anything else. No other doctor. And I spent years seeing many specialists, like the top specialists in all these different fields who could not give me any other answer. So I had to realize I had to take the power back myself. And, and I realized that really at the end of the day, I was missing soul, spirit, love, heart, yeah. all those kind of things. We cannot function without it. We can't. So I had to change my life in a big way and start nourishing those sides of me at the same time as, yes, absolutely, still enriching my, my food choices and my exercise, still a massive part of my life. But you cannot discount the other factors. Mm-hmm. So, so interesting you mentioned about the fat part. I think that's – Something a lot of people intuitively say, well, you know, the fat you eat is the fat you wear, but we kind of know it's fat's really important for our cells and the lipid bilayers and our hormones and our brain health and our neurology. And just yes. kind of looking at what your friends were doing in that industry, knowing what you know now, what kind mm-hmm. of pressure was there? What was everyone else doing from a lifestyle perspective? Were you living a healthier lifestyle than most and others were kind of off? What was your perspective? For me, I guess my perspective was that I was living a different different mm-hmm. lifestyle. It was just mm-hmm. different choices. And yeah. we all have our own paths. And some mm-hmm. people wanted to live in the now and the moment and it was just the next quick fix. However that yeah. looked, that might be buying 
you know, the latest outfit. And let's let's be real here. Many people are sucked into consumerism, whether in the modeling industry or not. So there was that side of things. There was the I want to, you know, party. So there was the drugs and there was the drinking. You know, there was the I haven't had a meal today, so I'm just going to grab fast food or I'm not going to eat. I'm going right. to have coffee. There, there are all these different choices, which, yes, we know are common in an in industry like modeling or dancing or whatever it is, but this can happen in, in any walk of life. So, yeah, I saw this. I also yeah. saw others who are addicted to the gym. We see this yeah. in every walk of life as well. Yeah. I never even considered counting calories. If someone said how many calories are in, you know, raw vegan chocolate, my favorite vice, or a stick of carrot, I would have no clue. It was never something that, that came into my mind. I did, you know, weigh myself at that stage and I had an expectation of where I wanted to sit, which felt healthy for me, but I never felt under extreme scrutiny or pressure yeah. to have to, in that moment, lose two kilos or something absurd like that. And I would never capitulate to that. I had a very very strong sense of self, which, as I said, got tested over and over again, but I still didn't want to be something I wasn't, even though you're pressured. I didn't, I didn't let that overtake me. I don't mm -hmm. feel. So after you developed the health challenge, the health scare with the ovarian cyst and you had the flatlining, yeah. what yeah. happened next? How did you overcome that health challenge? Well, I had to have a bit of time off. I yeah. wasn't really, I wasn't able to drive a car, let alone walk properly or wash my own hair. Like my body was in serious, just exhaustion. So I was back in Australia at this time and I I wasn't able to do hardly anything. My relationship broke down. I wasn't, you know, being a journalist. I wasn't being a model. All these facets of me, what I thought were me, were taken away. And so I was really left with what I really am. You know, nothing that you can fix onto. You are not your title. You are not your job. You are not what you have. We need to understand this. And this was my big wake up. It was a massive, massive aha moment for me. And it was in that time that I then spoke to my auntie who lives in the UK. And because this is before social media, the way I used to communicate with my family when I was away was writing epic emails. And that's, I'd be sharing what's going on with this show and this experience and where I'm at and what it's like living in Asia at the time. And... And she said, why don't you take these emails and, and write a fab book, as she termed it. Yeah. And I was like, I never considered doing that. And that was me shifting my path from then instead of writing articles, I started writing a book. And now 10 years later, you know, this book is in discussion with another agent to get it to get it published. It's been a bit of a rocky road to find the right fit. But is it's there a name for it yet? Yes, it's called Runway. And there's, there's a page on my book you can oh, sign boy. up to hear about the publishing when that gets finalized. And, and now I'm writing my second book on women's sexuality called Yoni Power. And it, it just shifted my life. And it was from there that I then chose to go back and do my master's and, and follow on with all my other training and certification and studies and, and life experience. It just it changed my life. And I, I didn't choose then to, to want to model full time ever again. Because as much as I loved being part of that world, I wasn't of that world. Yeah. Got and it. I had to be real with that. I had to be real. And if I knew if I, you know, went and I did, I moved to Paris, I went there, but I didn't, I didn't push to try and get on the runways. I did work during fashion week over there, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough. And so I found an editor and got my book on the road and I was painting and I was writing more and I was just immersing in this place I always wanted to be, but I didn't, didn't pound the pavement and, and, you know, storm around forcing this this career, I suppose, that did not resonate with my heart and soul, unfortunately. As much as, you know, there's beautiful elements to the industry, on its own, it, it wasn't enough for me. Got it. So you've taken all your experiences as a, a model and then kind of the transformation with your health challenges. And then you've incorporated a lot with, with uh, Tantra and, and various female sexuality. And you're incorporating that with the clients you're working to, with today. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So how does that look? If, I'm, if I'm someone coming in, who's the average person or average patient or client you're working with and what are their issues? No one's average. I definitely have, you know, like I'm sure you do, there's a massive mixed bag of tricks. We're all very individual, although yes, you're right, there are many similarities. I work mainly with women, but I have more and more men and I have more and more couples as well that I work yeah. with. And and this is from the empowerment coaching. So looking at that whole holistic perspective and then weaving in elements of, of Tantra to get a strong connection with your sacred sexual and sacred spiritual selves essentially to raise your consciousness, have a deeper connection with who you are, deeper connection, int intimacy with your beloved, deeper connection with all that is. So there's those kind of side, you know, elements. And then also more of my healing work is as a Reiki master doing more energetic and, and esoteric work. So there's that kind of thing as well. But I can weave all of that into the coaching. And mainly the people that come to me are at a crossroads. And this crossroads is often that they are now at a point in their life 
where they realize they don't choose to live like this anymore. And whether that is changing their profession from being in, you know, a, a very demanding corporate job and leading that lifestyle where they are lacking substance, kind of like what I experienced, but the other way around. But that disconnection from soul, that disconnection from spirit, that disconnection from their purpose and wanting to transition into a, a service role that they really deeply connect with. There's that side of things. There's others where it's the relationship side of things where they're feeling a disconnect from themselves. They disconnect from their sexual power. They disconnect from their body. They disconnect from their heart. And then whether they're in a relationship or not, they usually are feeling that disconnect with their partner if they are in a relationship. <clears throat> so looking so at a lot of – So they're kind of mm -hmm. – Go ahead. I'm just going to say they're in answer to your question, they're kind of, you know, common streams, I guess, that connect many of the clients that I work with. So I'm just trying to get a good visualization because we do similar things with – you know, the, the coaching side, right? You're getting people's diet and lifestyle and kind of core fundamental things kind of dialed in with what you're eating, sleeping, movement, hydration, those kind of things. And then you're building on top, you're putting a lot of focus on the sexuality aspect, which is something I don't really touch upon too much outside of, you know, making sure relationships are, are relatively healthy or referring out for good support. But you do yeah. a lot with the tantra, tantra mm -hmm. part of it, which a lot of people listening probably know that to be something about sexual positions and such. Can you go more into yeah. what that is? And then how do you, how do you, how does that work? Are you giving people a prescription for certain things to do at night? How does that look? Sure. Well, just, just to put up there first and foremost, yeah. all, all the time I spend with my patients is fully clothed. There's no genital touch. There can yeah. be misconstrued or misunderstanding of that. Got it. Okay. It's, it's in a very safe space. I mm -hmm. have a personal practice as well. So it's really fundamentally about building a connection with yourself and then if you're in a relationship or want to create that with a future partner, building that with, with your partner, a lot of this resides in getting rid of trauma. Mm -hmm. We carry an incredible amount of trauma within ourselves and, and like you're probably aware, you know, everything is energy. We know this from a science base. We have memories in our mind but we also have muscle memory right? Like let's say we tear a muscle. That muscle is, is going to remember that experience, right? Even though it heals. So we also have the memory. I work on an energetic level. So we're going to get a little bit metaphysical here, but instead of just the physical, instead of even just the emotional, we're looking at the energetic side of things and realizing that you may have had a traumatic experience when you're a young man or someone's a young woman and they have held on to that. And we hold on to that in different parts of our bodies. And I work with different energy centers. Some people know the, the term chakra, yeah. They're just energy centers in the body. Wheel. We have seven of them. Mm -hmm. Exactly right, an energy wheel. We have seven of them internally. And they connect to different elements of us. One of the biggest things I see is many people holding a lot of trauma in their second energy wheel. And this mm -hmm. connects to the sex organs. Mm -hmm. So this trauma often connects to sex and sexuality. It also connects to money, power, and creativity. So if you're not getting flow in those areas, there may likely be a trauma that you haven't dealt with, released, worked through, confronted, forgiven, and got your power back to get yourself in the present. We live so often in the past and so often in the future that we're not really empowered in the present moment. So while this may seem like a very long path, to get to your true potential, to empower you, to, for you to connect with your sexual energy, if you do be able to express yourself and feel into your sensual nature as an individual, let alone in a couple, we need to clear that trauma. So I do a lot of work, you know, excavating these spaces and clearing them so that we can start rebalancing where we're at in the here and now. And a lot of that, to be honest, works with forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. as humans, it does not come naturally to forgive. We love to hold on to things like a bag of mm -hmm. hot coals. And the reality is we're doing ourselves an injustice. We're not helping ourselves because that person who, you know, abused you, neglected you, abandoned you, whatever it was, and I am not saying that horrible things don't happen and that, you know, these are being excused, not by any means. Means, but I'm talking here on an energetic level. I'm talking here like it's a mystical act to be able to forgive their soul so that you can be released. You're not necessarily going to have to forget that that happened and you don't want to forget because it means then you will learn in future not to make those same choices perhaps and not to be in that same position perhaps. But we need to understand that we have the power, you have the power, I have the power to make those choices for our own lives to change where we're at. And this is about the empowerment work that I do that weaves into the, to the tantra because we give a lot of our power away. We give a lot of our sexual power away. 
You know, we say yes, mm-hmm. we want to say no. We've got to strengthen our boundaries. So while Tantra is, yes, sexuality and spirituality, there's a lot of foundational work there that covers our entire life. And this is why, to me, Tantra is a lifestyle. We're weaving together that sacred sexual and spiritual to, to awaken our consciousness. And by awaking our consciousness, we're, we're making wiser choices. We're so when you look at ourselves. Right. So when you look at your, these clients, they're coming in, whatever type of health issues you have, whether it's on the health side, whether it's their past trauma, you're looking at that. And from there, you're kind of creating a prescription on the, the Tantra side of specific positions to help kind of reawaken these various chakras. Is that what I'm hearing? I can do chakra rebalancing. Absolutely. That's part of it. It's very much case sensitive. Often I will say mainly for women, some men, if they're open to it, to do a guided chakra regression. It's kind of like a semi version of hypnosis of sorts, but you have to be really active in the mind while your body is calm. So Mm -hmm. if there are any yogis listening, it's kind of like yoga nidra. It's like you're in a beautiful, deep relaxation, but your mind is switched on and can do the work while your body is totally chilled out, loving it. This kind of work is purely guided by my voice. So I will guide them back into their lower energy wheels to essentially bring up, confront whatever's been housed there. And yeah, that's in the form of memories. It's not in the sense essential to relive it to just purely bring up the past that's not the point the point is that it's there you're holding on to it it is not serving you we need to confront it you need to get your power back and you need to forgive that person that experience whatever it is to de- like disconnect detach from that let it go move on so we can clear that out and move up and move you into the present so that's one element and that's obviously my healing modality but that is one simple practice that I can do with and I do with clients all around the world via Skype to then have them in a clearer space to be able to do let's say the tantric work and you know a prescription <clears throat> as such you know learning how to breathe is one of the found like foundational techniques that I would teach someone on the tantric path because we don't breathe properly we shallow breathe all the time and breath is one of the most important key parts to not only our survival but then yes our sexual empowerment you can change your whole sexual experience when you start working with breath which sounds crazy but once you learn it it will change how you approach that and i've got free videos that i can share with you dr j if you want to share them with your listeners as well to get them on that track if they're curious that'd be great yeah i see a lot of people that are in that sympathetic fight or flight nervous system state right kind of the adrenals are being whipped so to speak they're really breathing from their chest which you know really actually further puts them into that sympathetic adrenal state because if they breathe, if they breathe from their chest, right, mm-hmm. they're activating a lot of these neck muscles, which puts them into this forward head posture, which then actually uh, decreases the airflow. So then they have less oxygen going in and you know less um, airflow going to the nose and the na- the nasal sinus is what actually activates the parasympathetic through breathing. So instead of this deep belly breath where they're moving their their belly as they breathe, they're breathing from their Mm. neck, they're breathing from their chest, and they're activating that fight or flight nervous system. Are you finding something similar with your clients? Yes, and and obviously, I mean, that may seem extreme for some people because they don't realize how interconnected we are. The human body is just phenomenal. So I'm so pleased you explained it like that. It's really important to have a good understanding of the effect of not breathing correctly. And, and to get an understanding of what breathing correctly looks like, watch a baby breathe or watch you know your pet like a cat or a dog and see that full belly expansion and then the collapse of the belly as it draws the belly button draws back towards the spine this is what we're talking about here and that's the way yeah we slow down you know the fight or flight we slow down the parasympathetic right. nervous system that's normally on edge and it's that you know that heart kind of palpitation almost that kind of flighty energy that is literally sucking our power away Right. So it's, right. it's the way we choose to breathe on one simple thing. If you don't take anything else from this conversation we're having for those lovely listeners, it's looking at how you're breathing right now, right now in this very moment, whether you're driving in the car, you can do it, whether you're walking with, you know, podcasts going around the streets, anywhere you can actually slow down. And, and I encourage clients to do this first thing in their morning, you know, in the morning when they're laying in bed, even put one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart and have this connection have this connection with yourself and then to do it throughout the day whenever they feel a bit anxious or nervous or angry, overwhelmed, whatever it is. And then last thing at night, bring yourself back to this point also helps with a reconnection to yourself. And that is so important because we are so disconnected, even though like we are talking across the world right now, we're so connected technologically, but we're so disconnected emotionally, spiritually, energetically. 
And, yeah. and this is what's so important. This is what we're missing in this day and age. And there is no, there's no wonder drug. There's no band aid. There's, there's no, you know, remedy for that. We, we really need to, to just own it and understand that, you know what, the power's with me. I need to make some more conscious choices. So let's start with my breath. I think that's great. And with patients, you kind of alluded to it, one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. And mm-hmm. what I tell my patients is very simple. The hand, the hand that's in the belly is the one that should be moving. The one over the heart really shouldn't be moving much. It should be primarily coming from that bottom hand on the belly, which really tells me that you're breathing from the diaphragm and you're having those really good, big diaphragmatic breaths into the nose, out to the nose, or into the nose, out to the mouth to really yeah. get the parasympathetics going. And I also recommend doing that to like one of the M waves, familiar with the Heart Math Institute. They have like mm-hmm. the M wave that kind of helps get you into coherence which is looking at heart rate variability and it's timing and synchronizing the breath in and out to get you into that state of coherence where the brain and the heart are neurologically kind of communicating at its peak. Yeah. And the interesting thing, I'm not sure if you come from this school of thought, but I certainly believe that while we've obviously got our our normal brain, you know, the heart and also like the digestive system, like, you know, that lower hand where it's going to be, they're also kind of like main brains as well. So we want those three kind of brains of sorts to be functioning and talking and in harmony together. Yeah. To me, that's so important. And and while that hand on your heart may not be moving, and we definitely don't want it to be moving as much as that belly yeah. hand, we want you to be able to even connect with your heartbeat. Start mm-hmm. to feel that. Start to slow down enough to be present enough to just relax into the moment and know that you are doing something wonderful by just being. This thing that I do a lot of work with is, is the doing and the being. And I break this mm-hmm. up into like the masculine doing and the feminine being because we do a lot of energy work as I've already touched on with Tantra and we talk about Shakti and Shiva, like the God and the Goddess. They're yeah. two parts, like the yin and the yang. I'm sure mm-hmm. we've all seen that. You know, it's mm-hmm. like the black kind of little blob that's actually a fish with a little white bit and, and the white with a little bit of black. That yeah. is us. We are like you are mainly masculine, but you've got some feminine energy and I'm mainly mm-hmm. feminine, but I have some masculine energy. We need this to harmonize ourselves in this day and age in such a driving, doing success, you know, hungry environment, humanity, society we've created. We're very disbalanced. We're very masculine the way we do things. We think we must be doing things all the time. We have checklists. We have to rush here and here. We don't achieve enough at a certain time. This is all masculine. And don't get me wrong, I have much reverence for that and I love it. And we need this side of us to get things done. But we also need to see the value in, in the being, in the feminine, in the creative, in the flow, in the slowing down and the enjoying, right? Right. This is what's also missing in our life. And and that's saying that you know, I feel was something that was missing in my life when I when I had that health scare. And many clients that I see, they're either too far in their masculine or some of them, not very often, are too far in the feminine, not getting things done because they're changing their mind and, and flighty and, and from here to there, here to there. We need to find balance and strike that balance every single day. So that's another thing you can ask yourself is, am I driving too much? That the type A personality, the must achieve, the must do this, the working 12 hours, 14 hours a day pulling back and and honoring some you time yeah sometimes we even need to have like you know a date for ourselves where i'm going to go to the museum today i'm going to take myself to a movie i'm going to sleep in i'm going to read a book and just you know whether it's 20 minutes maybe five minutes to slow down and have a cup of tea we have to start valuing this as well because otherwise we reach burnout and i'm sure you've seen that with your right. clients like it can get to adrenal fatigue it can get to absolute exhaustion it can get to depression or so many different ways it can appear physically if we're yeah. not emotionally nourishing ourselves and, and looking at the energetics yeah. of things as well. And I, I see a lot of patients who are female. Typically, my average patient is between 35 and 65 and female. I'd say majority female, but I still have a good percent of, of males as well. But mm-hmm. there's a typical pattern that I see in a lot of my female patients, right? There, mm-hmm. There's this type A kind of, you know, go, go, go type of world that we all live in. And mm-hmm. I kind of see that as women tapping into that masculine side where they're trying to go, 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 go. And then there's the inability to kind of bounce back and repair from that. And it was interesting because you kind of can talk about it in this abstract way of energy, but Dr. John Gray Mm -hmm. did a lecture and he was talking about the female hormones, progesterone, primarily estrogen, when Mm -hmm. there's lots and lots of stress in an estrogen-like environment, testosterone is the fuel that kind of helps buffer the cortisol. And I call it testosterone is like that male energy, right? And when Mm -hmm. testosterone is lower, which is obviously the case in a female environment, right? Ten times lower than a male. They don't quite have that recovery from the cortisol aspect. And I I see that when you're saying about the the male-male 
male side of it and the female side is the women kind of depleting some of that female energy by tapping too much into the male. Can you elaborate more on that? Do you see that as well from this type yes. world we live in? Yes. And, and I love that you brought this up and thank you for bringing the science into it. It's so important as well. And I totally hear you in a simplistic way. I guess what we're, what we're saying here, because we're on the same page, I feel, is that females aren't designed to function like that. And yet we've created a society where we have to fit into this box. Right. That means this is how women are supposed to act. So this is why now more than ever, there's a massive calling for a shift. This is why, you know, we've got this new feminist kind of wave happening. People are saying, even men are saying, I'm a feminist because I see the value in women. Now, this isn't about not loving men. Don't get me wrong. I have deep reverence for men. Absolutely. It's about knowing where the strengths lie and seeing that there is equality in different strengths, that we are yeah. equal, but we have differences, right? And one thing that I find is deeply important that if we're going to, you know, speak about women in this regard, we obviously have a cycle, right? Let's just say, you know, an average 28-day cycle. We are very much connected to the moon, the tides, all of the above. Yeah. But to bring this back, you know, we know if we break it down, like, you know, there's seven days in, in each kind of part of the cycle. If we look at this from an energetic perspective, we'll see that, you know, ovulation is an expressive time. A woman is mainly very expressive at this time. She then goes in, you know, to her creative phase for the next seven days. And this is right before she's about to menstruate. And then her menstruation time, we call it moon time in my line of work. It's a reflective time. She needs to pull back. This is not the time to be driving. I'm not saying you need to have, you know, five days off and that you, you, you can't do things because you have your period. Not at all. But you need to know that you are in a very very, you know, introspective phase of your cycle. You need to honor that, to slow down a little bit, to not book as many appointments, to not have as many meetings, to really honor where you're at because women, we say, are the most psychic and intuitive at this phase as well. So that should be a gift. Back ancient times, civilizations used to honor and revere women at this time. It was called the red tent. Women would gather in a space together and those who weren't on their own time, perhaps crones, the grandmothers who no longer are in this phase and, and the young children, and the men would bring them food. They weren't asked to do chores. They weren't doing, doing, doing. They were being with each other, rubbing each other's bellies, plaiting each other's hair, sharing stories, passing on wisdom from the elders to the youngers. It was a very revered time. We have lost all of this because it's like, I don't have time for that. I have to do this, this, and this before 6 a.m. So we've, we've really right. lost that balance, lost that harmony. But the thing is, once you come out of that reflective phase, after you've had your moon time, after your period, you are in your most dynamic phase. But you will not be your most dynamic, really getting out there, doing what you want to do, if you do not honor that reflective time. We need harmony and balance. We need day and night. We need winter and summer. Like, you know, we know we can't function all the time. If everything was sunshine, we'd die. We couldn't function all the time. If it was darkness, we'd die. And we've lost this connection and, and women especially because they feel they have to conform to something they're not. But in saying that, it's also important for the men to know that they need to have downtime too. They can't always be the ones that are striving and, and having to do to provide in some way. It's okay for them to pull back a little bit and, and have a bit of time off and have some downtime and have some nurturing time and, and to be held and seen as well. We need to instill that into our young boys and young men and, and men of today in the world. You said testosterone is a big buffer from a hormone perspective of cortisol, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And that's the biggest thing. Men with adequate levels of testosterone, they can buffer the stress from cortisol. That's a big aspect. But the problem is we live in a very toxic world where there are lots of synthetic estrogens around us. I'm pleased which, you said this. Yeah. And mm. that can affect a lot of the brain feedback loops that talk to the genitals to make the mm -hmm. hormones. It can do mm -hmm. the same for females because it can push them into estrogen dominance, which mm -hmm. we did a big podcast on two weeks ago, which can cause right. more PMS, fibroids, endometriosis, fibrocystic breast. So there's kind of on both sides, there's this yin and the yang, like we talked about, of different mm -hmm. imbalances. And yeah, you are totally right when it comes to the males as well. They have to make sure they're doing the right things, keeping the insulin under control and doing all the good diet and lifestyle things regarding sleep and the breathing and the right movement. Is there anything else, let's say a female listener here can be doing maybe different than a male, maybe we can break it up on what's better for each to kind of get their more in touch with their sexuality outside of what we already mentioned so far? Yeah. Well, I guess besides what we just mentioned, which is knowing your cycle and honoring those, you know, yep. the expressive, creative, reflective, dynamic, breathing honoring too. that in mm -hmm. itself is so important. Yes, the breathing, we've touched on that. Actually, setting some time aside and I call these sacred sessions like scheduling mm -hmm. lovemaking if you're in a couple yeah but 
scheduling time for yourself as an individual as well. So if you have children or you have a busy schedule, this is perfect for you because you live a scheduled life and this is the way you've constructed your life and, and you're, you know, you're part of that system and that's okay if this is what, you know, you choose. And if that is the case, then you need to actively get your pen in your hand and carve out, put it in, write it in pen. This is what I'm going to do for me. And maybe it's something a week and maybe it's one hour a week. I like to obviously have a little bit every day, which is much nicer than just having one bit a week. you got to find what works for you. But I call this non-negotiable time. I wrote an article about your best threesome ever. <laughs> and those three elements are <laughs> with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, with which is your soul, I call that, with spirit. So something greater than you, however you connect with that, whether you believe that is God or the universe or source or whatever it is you call it. And then the third relationship is your tribe. It's with your children. It's with your <clears> beloved. It's <throat> with your community beyond that. But those first two relationships are non-negotiable, non-negotiable. The first relationship is with yourself. So you might be, you know what, every single day I start my morning ritual with a cup of tea and I, I watch the sunrise if you were getting up that early or yeah. whatever it is, you are not on your phone, you are not multitasking, you are not with another. It is purely you time for you. You are nourishing yourself, your soul. And once that is done, you're ready to have a connection with something greater than you. For some people, this is in meditation, it's in prayer, it's on the yoga mat, it might be, you know, speaking to, to a spiritual director. It might be going to church. However it looks, it doesn't need to look a certain way. It's just what you feel is a way you can connect. It might be, you know, reading an excerpt from, from a book that you feel gives you some wisdom. It's having a connection with something that's greater than you to open up that, that channel so you feel you have a connection there, like a lifeline. And once you've nourished those two, you are then a more full and a more fulfilled cup to be of greater service with your partner, with your child or children in your community, at the office, in your space of work, however that is. But what we don't do is nourish those two relationships first. We always go to that third relationship and then we wonder why we're angry, frustrated, feeling not seen, not heard, not held. And this applies for men and women. So I kind of answered it, I guess, in one go. But yeah. in that regard, we don't have to be different. We're still having a human experience. We still have to learn to take care of these elements of ourselves in whatever way looks good for us, there's no right and wrong, but you have to show up and do the work. You have to show up and do the work. No one else is going to do this for you. Like I said, there's there's no pill that can do that for you. Right, right. And you mentioned something earlier just a few minutes ago about scheduling lovemaking. Can you go more into that? Yeah, absolutely. So I wrote a post called Sacred Sessions. And I did this because I was seeing more and more people having a disconnect with their, I say beloved, with your partner, with your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. In this day and age, we may be really supportive of each other. You know, we may do little things for each other. One person buys the groceries, one, you know, pays the bills, whatever it is, right? We, we support each other and we have a union, but we're neglecting the sacred sexual and the sacred spiritual, like coming together, the intimacy, the real sacred time. So I said, you have to schedule this in. If you want to invest in this, it means that not that it doesn't have to be romantic or it doesn't have to be spontaneous. It may not be conventionally spontaneous because you're going to be like, okay, Thursday evening, six till nine or whatever it is, six till eight, it's just you and me. We've got a babysitter or we're going to, you know, go somewhere or we're just going to create some time and space in our own bedroom. It's actually honoring your relationship so much that you're making it just as important, if not more important than other things. This is what we need to know here. Because your beloved needs to know that they're important to you and you need to demonstrate that with action. Some people like the words on top of it. They like a gift <clears> on top <throat> of it. They like some service on top of it. We may have heard of the love languages. This exists too. Yeah. And whether this is time where you actually make love or however that looks to you or whether it's just being together and snuggling and having a shower together. I've written a list which I'm going to publish soon about different ideas of how you can use this time. And you can be really playful and you can experiment with different, you know, sexual practices that you may not have explored before. And whether it's role playing or give each other massages, it can be anything that you both consensually agree to and want to explore together and holding that space for each other. There's no judgment here. There's none of that. This is a really beautiful space to get really intimate with your beloved and not let it be superseded by something else unless I say there's a you know a serious extreme if someone's really unwell or something drastic's happened we have to understand life happens other than that this is non-negotiable non-negotiable and it needs to be scheduled at least you know once a week or once a fortnight depending on how your relationship's set up that's great that's awesome well is there any way listeners here can get a hold of you outside of your website is there anything else you want to share any books or any um 
other opt-ins or video series coming your way? There's a free video series on my website. Oh, it's mainly targeted at ladies, but guys could definitely get some mm-hmm. value out of it. As soon as you click on stellamuse.com, and that's Stella with an A, as you said, at the very top, there's an opt-in there for a four-part video series, and it touches on your sacred sexual space. We call it the Yoni, which means mm-hmm. literally your entire female genital area, the Yoni, oh. the heart, the mind, mm-hmm. and how this needs to be in sync for a woman to be fully in her most empowered space. So that video series is easily accessible. And then at the bottom of my website, there's a free ebook, which is like a blueprint for your life purpose. And it's one that you can just print off and work through. It's definitely for men, for women at any stage of life. Great, especially if you're at a turning point and you want some guidance along the way. Other than that, you can head over to any of my social media links. There's plenty of videos and, and lots of articles that are, very practical and you can get some ideas that you can implement today. And if you feel I can be of service, then contact page, send me an email and, and let me know specifically how you feel I can assist. Excellent. Well, before I go into my last question, is there anything else that's on the tip of your kind of tongue or you're on top of your head that you wanted to really put out there to the listeners? The most important thing is is to honor your integrity and truth. Mm -hmm. Out of everything we've spoken about here, it really has to resonate with you. There's no right and wrong, but you have to carve out that time, a bit of space, a bit of stillness to start listening to what your body, your heart, your soul, your mind, your genitals is, is saying to you because our bodies talk to us all the time. We know when we're tired. We know when we're hungry. We know when we're thirsty. It speaks to us in other ways as well, and we don't often slow down enough to listen. So I, I urge all our listeners now to, to take that time to connect with themselves and find out what they need. And one simple way, if you're not sure how to do this, I love putting one hand on the heart, one hand yeah. on the belly, like we've already yeah. discussed, the yeah. exact same pose, and just slow down, do some of that belly breathing, and then ask, what do you need me to know right now? What do you need me to know right now? And without judgment, just let whatever answer comes to you come to you in whatever way. And if you get nothing, that's okay. Be open to an answer coming to you that night in your dreams, seeing a sign, hearing a song on the radio, an answer will come to you because you've opened up that line of communication. So be patient and come from a place of love and kindness and compassion for yourself. Well, you've inspired me to do a really good uh, breathing session after this podcast. So thanks for that. Right. You're welcome, Dr. J. <laughs> awesome. Well, last question for you. I typically end this uh, podcast with every question uh, for all the different guests here. but if you were on a desert island, what would be the one supplement or herb that you'd want to take with yourself? Oh, that is so tricky because I'm such a herb person. <laughs> Could be anything. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe, I say oregano. I know you guys say oregano. Yeah. I'd probably take that because it's so multi-purposeful and multi-useful being an antibacterial and antifungal. And Absolutely. And you could probably take, you know, a little bit every day. I'm gathering. I've got clean water on this island. Um, take a little bit every day to, you know, to keep my immune system strong as well and, and make me feel, you know, as healthy as, as I guess I can be with only one herb. I love it. Well, I've gone to Mexico a few times and gotten parasite infections, and I brought it with myself, and it's totally knocked it out. So I there love you it. Go. Very cool. All right. Thank well, you. Elise, great chatting with you. StellaMuse.com, and look forward to having you back soon. Thank you so much, Dr. J. You have a wonderful rest of your day. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thanks. You as well, Elise. Got a question for Dr. J? Go to beyondwellnessradio.com and click the questions button. Then tune in to hear the answer. Also, if you like the show, click below to review us on iTunes. For more Beyond Wellness Radio, go to beyondwellnessradio.com.